morning. Uh, let's turn it off. Good morning and welcome. Is it even morning? It's like an hour before sunrise or something. Is, is it even morning? I, I don't know, but welcome, welcome to this episode. Um, this is going to be, uh, as I, you know, I'll start off the day in the life kind of, of direction, but in this episode, um, I've had some comments and some remarks in my channel that I'm going to uh, address uh, address some of those, and uh, we're going to talk about that uh, Black IP video. So that's that's what's in store. But um, let's get going. Right, so the first thing I want to address is a comment from Sean uh, Gunther who mentioned the. Uh, the ditty on David Hasselhoff and what in the world. This appeared as I was just standing here looking at the clock one day and there it was in the video. So I have somehow cursed my oldest son with a very peculiar sense of humor. And I take full responsibility for that. I, I don't know what I did, but his sense of humor includes a list of words that are fun to say. And and he thought Hasselhoff was among those words as so, so, um, somewhere in college, uh, end of high school, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it was probably around when he was 16 or 17. We came up with a sentence using all of the fun words to say. So this is it. David Hasselhoff was bamboozled when his caboodle of loofahs and doilies was burgled. That, that's, that's it. That's the story. And uh, my, my second son has kind of embraced this as you know that sort of weird thing that his brother and his dad so he's kind of embraced it with us but um yeah that's the the list of fun there was another word it got tagged on somewhere later on i can't remember what it was um but uh, this is the sentence that we came up with uh, david hasselhoff was bamboozled when his caboodle of loofahs and doilies was burgled that, that's it that, that, that's the story next segment So this segment, this video, this segment is kind of the what's the video about. This video is about an interesting concept. I'm calling this the customer service video. Customer service video, what, what does that even mean? First of all, who's your customer? Second of all, what do you do about it? So that's, that's kind of where we're going. My customer for my YouTube channel is you. You, you, you are my customer, my YouTube customer. And you've spoken, well, one of you has spoken. The, the, I asked in, in a previous video, should I post the Boom Boom Pow cover? I got one comment so far and the comment is yes. So um, I'm gonna brave those waters. I think I'm gonna break those, brave those waters. But I'm gonna tweak the video a little bit more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some more scenes in. I might redo the background track a little bit. We'll see what I, what I need to do. So it's not gonna come out like instantaneously, but I, I, I'm gonna, unless some of you other people like come in and, and say, no, absolutely, we do not wanna see you act like an idiot for four and a half minutes or whatever. We do not wanna see that. If you, if you, if you come back with those comments, um, then, you know, I gotta respond to what my customer wants. I gotta respond, customer respond. Who is your customer? That's, that's kind of where we're going for this. Um, I did not, I did not do a smart thing yesterday. I posted today's video, it's Monday, today's Monday. I posted my Monday video and then instead of hitting the schedule button, I hit the publish button. So my Monday video published last night. That means I, I don't know what I'm gonna do for a Monday video. I may not have a Monday video. I'm probably gonna try to slap together a, uh, the Snap Life slap together. That sounds so, that sounds so um, unintentional. But I, I have a Snap Life recorded and I'll have to put on the timeline and edit it and just find, find a, a suitable piece of music. So that's, that's kind of what's on the plan. Um, that's kind of what's on the plan is to put that Snap Life up this afternoon. Uh, that's why I got up at 5.45, so I can have an extra 45 minutes. And yeah, I can edit a Snap Life video in 45 minutes. So those of you who are on, on the No Small Creator, that reminds me. I'm gonna have a sip of coffee and tell you a story. So, 
Cody Weiner, who sort of founded the the No Small Creator um, group, uh, has issued something he's calling No Small November. No Small November. And everybody's supposed to find a really big project, announce what it is, and do that project, and hashtag it No Small November. Here's my project. If you have been a, like a super dedicated viewer of this channel for the last 12, nine months even, um, there have been a few mentions about my fiction project. And my fiction project goes back, to, started in 1987, and then there was a huge, huge overhaul in 2016. Did I say 97? 1987. I don't know what I said, but back in 1987 when I started it, 2016, there was a, there was a, a, a sort of a, a line drawn that said done in 2005. And by done, what that line meant was awful. And so 11 years passed, and then 2016, major overhaul. Now, now I, think, I think the form of the stories is, is, is good. I think the writing is much better than it was in 1987 for sure. So that's, that's my, my project. I started a website. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try a very interesting and very novel, <laughs> novel, see what I did there. I'm going to try a very interesting way of, of delivering that content, which is to create a website that allows multiple paths through the story. You can follow the, the story the way it was written, obviously by you know next, previous, next, previous. If you did next, previous, next, previous, you would actually just be reading the same two chapters back and forth over and over again. But you can next, 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 next until you get to, you know. And then to sort of have some geographical timelines. So here's a place on the map, and here's a, a, a scene that happened, and here's a scene that happened. And it wouldn't even make a story because it would just be scenes in the same place. So that's, that's going to be another, another path through. And then sometimes things happen simultaneously in different places, and so break those into location timelines. And, and as I think of other ways to navigate the story, I'll, I'll, I'll create those as well. It should be an interesting project, and I've already started it. I've started it. It's www.ciliar, S-I-L-I-A-R. Ciliar is the name of the continent world that, that it uh, takes place on. So ciliar.com. That is my... No small November announcement. Um, so what I want to I want to do for my no small November is to to round that out and flesh that out. Get all of the first novel, the first the first book uh, done. Right now, 11, 12, 13, There's like thirteen or fourteen completely finished books. Thirteen, uh, thirteen for sure. There's an 11 story, there's an 11 book series called the Thrice Born series. All right, watch for that. Watch for that. More on that. What were we talking about? Oh, your customer. Who is your customer? That will be kind of the question. And if you identify your customer, now, now you're going to know what priorities your business should have. Business, whatever that is. I'm a teacher. Who's my customer? It's not as obvious as you think. End of segment. I, I got one more. I got one more segment. This is a, an experiment. This is strictly an experiment. One of the things that emerged from what I was doing on Saturday, I, I kind of like a camera angle where the, the camera is further back. And, and one of the reasons that I like the camera close is the audio. So I found this cable, I've had this cable for a long, long time. So there's a cable attached to my microphone, which is balanced on top of the Joby, and the camera is over there. I just want to see what it sounds like. Because it, I have this thing in the back of my head that this cable is not shielded, which means that all of the 60 cycle is getting picked up. So we'll know after, uh, after this clip. I'm going to let you guys see the um, results of this experiment. So. Uh, I gotta stand up to turn the camera off now. I gotta stand. It's a way over there. So, end of segment. All right, it's getting closer to time to, to start working. I just wanna, I've moved over to my other room, as you can see, and I'm getting ready to set some things up for a lab that we're doing tomorrow. But anyway, 
quick thought, just I wanna I wanna go back to who's your customer? You you can't satisfy your customer unless you know who your customer is. Now, it may seem obvious who the customer is, but I don't think that's always the case. I think sometimes we have to look a little deeper in order in order to figure out who who the customer is. In some cases, it's pretty obvious. If you're a grocery store owner, you know who the customer is. Grocery store, the people who come in and buy groceries, that, that's who the customer is. What if you're an inspector? Who are you actually serving? Let's say you're the, the dairy inspector. I don't know if there's such a thing as a dairy inspector, but let's say there's a dairy inspector who comes into the grocery store and inspects the, 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 the dairy. Who is he serving? Who is his or her customer? And that would be the person who buys the milk. So the, the customer, and it also would be his supervisor, his boss. Those would be customers of his service because they're paying him to provide that service. Let's say you're a social service agency. The customer may not necessarily be the person who you're serving, although they are a customer of sorts. If you don't know who your customer is, you don't know who you're working for. I know it's kind of a weird concept because if you work at a fast food restaurant, you say, well, I work for the manager, but the manager works for the company and the company works for the person buying that cheeseburger. So ultimately, the person at that cash register works for the customer who is standing before them. I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's too complicated. <sighs> lunch, it is lunchtime. And I'm having, I got, I found these new stackable, and there's only like, I forgot, 100 calories per, per container. So this fits. Um, I know that one, one, at one point I mentioned, you know, I was continuing to work on trying to manage my weight or lose weight. I've uh, I done okay. Uh, last time I weighed, I forget, it was Sunday or Saturday. Um, I was at the same or maybe like it was It was not a very accurate scale, but about the same or a little bit less than the previous time. So still making progress on that. So I'm trying that camera angle out again. Also, this is experiment number two. I have I've put my boom, my boom mic. I've put my shotgun mic on a boom mic stand that's sitting on the desk, and it's, I've got a clampy thing. I don't have actually a mic clip for this microphone. I have a mic clip at home. I'll probably try. So this is experiment number two. So the microphone is actually right, right there, above me. It's not exactly facing the right way. It's kind of facing here. We'll see how it, see how it turns out. Experiment. If you don't try, if you don't try different things, you'll never never do anything different. You always do the old thing if you don't try something new. That's probably that's probably a good point in this segment. All right, I gotta reach way over there to turn the camera off. Ugh. All right, it is the end of the day, and I'm gonna wrap this video up. Um, wrap this video up. I, I wanna touch back on the who is the customer thing real quickly. You, sometimes, if you know who the customer is, you know who you, who you have to please. And I said something about social service agency, the, the person they're serving may not necessarily be the customer because indirectly, whoever is funding the social service agency, they also want to be pleased. They wanna make sure that their, their, their money that they're giving the social service agency to carry on work, they wanna make sure that that money is being spent wisely. So even though they're doing social service work for this person, there may be another person who has a, who is a stakeholder in what's being done. Just like in a, as a school teacher, I'm serving the students. And so the students are indeed sort of customers, but also their parents are stakeholders, as well as the community, the people who eventually will employ them. So, Whatever your, your job, whatever your job situation is, if you're an insurance adjuster, you work for the insurance company, but you also work for the insurance company's clients, the customers who pay the premiums. Who are you 
working for it is not a simple question as you just say who signed my paycheck now that person whoever signs your paycheck that's very important to know and you want to please that person as well uh, I said earlier in the video it, it's kind of complicated maybe it's just a little a little too complicated to try to knock off in a day in the life type of video um, that's all I want to do for this video I'm gonna wrap this guy up get out of here um, get home. I think I'm going home. I'm still trying to figure out if there's any athletic events tonight. Thank you for watching. Um, I believe the audio experiment was successful. I listened to some of the clips earlier. So I'm looking forward to maybe altering my camera techniques a little bit and, and a little more variety, a little more. Uh, so got that. So uh, subscribe to the channel, sign up for notifications, hit the like button, leave me a comment, a question, a suggestion. Uh, that's all for this one. I will see you in the next one.